Um, so uh, this morning's speaker is um, Liz. Um, she's uh, from a research data steward uh, of the Erasmus Research Institute uh, of Management um, for the University of uh, Rotterdam. Liz has a mas master's degree in astrophysics from the National Astronomers University of Mexico and a PhD in astrophysics from the University of Manchester. Um, before joining the Erasmus Research Institute of Management, um, she worked at the Leiden Observatory in the Netherlands as a researcher and support manager uh, of the largest array of telescopes in the world, um, I'm envious. <laughs> she is an expert on data management, open data and uh, public engagement. Um, so Liz, uh, if you want to uh, take over um, and uh, start your presentation, I think. Um, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you now. for the introduction. Yes, thank you. I just want to, um, as a, um, not a disclaimer, but I might mute myself because I have a bit of a cough. So I might be coughing at the middle of the uh, talk. So, um, all right, let me share my screen. Okay. Here. Do you see my screen? Yeah, it's working. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so as a, as a, as a uh, Diana said, uh, I'm one of the five research data stewards at the um, at the University of Rotterdam, um, Erasmus University Rotterdam, and I am uh, specially hired by ERIM. So ERIM is the Erasmus Research Institute of Management. And we cover two different faculties, uh, the Erasmus Rotterdam, sorry, the Rotterdam School of Management and the Erasmus School of Economics. Um, but I wanted to have a bit of an introduction of sort of um, how we are seated in the university. So this is sort of like a, a view of where do where do we are. So this is the, the EUR, so is the Erasmus University Rotterdam um, Digital Competence Center, so it's a DCC which kind of encompasses us as the data stewards. And then it also has the library, the information technology, the uh, chief information officer and the privacy officers that also most of them are sort of in each privacy officer per faculty. And we also have uh, data stewards per faculty. So we are sort of embedded in the faculty, but then we also, for example, I have four days a week at my faculty, but one day a week at the university level so we all we have like weekly meetings to coordinate and align all our messages and topics and things so that the university also moves sort of together with the faculties um, um i've been in other universities before and to me <laughs> Erasmus seemed like every faculty is a different world so i think that was needed to have sort of a centralized a little bit at least to know what's happening in other faculties so that we sometimes use the same expertise or sometimes do something different, but I think it's good to have this uh, a little bit of centralization as well. Um, so this is what we, uh, where we sit, let's say, and we are, I can hear a dog. <laughs> yeah. So we are five data stewards. We all, um, so actually Anna, myself and Niels were hired from to start the 1st of January. So this year, uh, 11 months already. And uh, Panayota and Edward started a little bit later, um, but so we all covered all the faculties. Some of us have two schools of faculty. So I have, for example, RSMNEC, as I mentioned, and uh, Panayota also has two faculties and Niels also has two. Um, but so we, we are, yeah, let's say, I think a newish team <laughs> started working together, but it's very nice that we all sort of started at the same time. So we all feel a little bit lost at the same time as well. <laughs> Um, so when research is, so this is going to be a little bit like our experience, but also a little bit biased towards my experience on how do we use the MP online. Um, and so I wanted to go through how do we get researchers to write data management plans. And so first of all, one of the main things that we have, at least for my faculty, is not in all faculties, but uh, it's been implemented in, in a, at least uh, ARIM, and I know that uh, other faculties also have it. If, the, for the first, G, first year PhD students since last year, even, no, yeah, 2020, they have to submit a data management plan by the first year assessment. So they start in September, let's say 2020, and by September 2021, 2021, they have to do a first year assessment. And then the first year assessment is also the like 
proposal of what are they going to do and how are they going to do it. But in this assessment of this um, revision thing, they have to have a data management plan. And this data management plan has to be approved by the data steward. So this is something that I have to revise. Um, and as I said, this is not in all faculties, but it's uh, starting to become sort of the norm. So this is a mandatory document for the PhD students. Then any researcher that is doing research projects, including humans, they have to go through an ethical approval. And before you even do the ethical approval, you have to have an approved EMP. So that's the second line of uh, reaching the researchers. And lastly, any researcher with external funding, they also have to submit a data management plan. Usually this is after they get the grant, of course. And uh, in our university, that's not the most. I would say about five to 10% of the researchers might get funding from external funders. So like the National Research Council in the Netherlands or the European Council, um, and they, they, are, they have to provide like it's a deliver deliverable DMP. And, and this DMP is also with support or that is not really necessarily approved by the data steward, but we give advice and um, support to respond to this DMP. Um, so this is sort of the points of contact. Um, but with the PhD students, I guess, at least for myself, it was easier to have a whole sort of training and workshop um, on how to write data management plan, because for them, at least it's the first time they've ever even heard about data management plans. And so this is sort of the timeline of uh, an airing PhD student. So I'm, I'm now very much biasing towards what I had to do when I arrived. So at the beginning of, so they start in September and in about January, end of January, February, they have this uh, scientific integrity course. They have a research data management workshop and they have the data management plan. Uh, they have to write it. And in the first year assessment, they have to provide that they wrote the data management plan. It has to be approved. And then this mid term evaluation is at 2.5 years. Ideally, they have to review the DMP and change whatever was necessary. Um, and then as an output, when they finish, hopefully they publish the data management plan as well. And then you go through other things that ideally publishing the data as well and everything. Um, so I'm gonna focus on the preparation side. So I'm gonna show you a little bit how I did the workshop form the, the PhD students of this year, let's say. Um, so inside, there is a course already established called Scientific Integrity, and inside this course, there were two modules. One module was Open Science, and then the other module is Research Data Management. And inside the Research Data Management, I did sort of like Intro to Research Data Management, and then we did like a hands-on Write Your Data Management Plan. And uh, like sort of remain, <laughs> this was in February, so they started September, this is February when they do this workshop and they have to submit the DMP in the next, the following September, right? So it's still a big gap. This was one of the, my learning um, things that I learned after this, but okay. So at this point is February, so we did the data management workshop. And the idea is I did sort of uh, explaining what a data management plan is and how do you work with the data management. So like we keep saying it's a living document, make sure that you can change stuff um, but it's important that we have a look at it, even now that you're not even sure what are you researching, but that you know which questions you will be asked to, to answer this thing. And so the way I did it was even show them like, so how do you register? Um, how do you start creating a plan? And at that point, I think we had two different templates for the university. Right now we only have one. So I had to say like, okay, so how do you select the uh, templates and things? Um, one of the things that we was also very important was that from the library side, uh, we were told that most of the PhD students do not have an ORCID. And as you probably already know, ORCID was one of the things that the DMP asked you to, sign, to, to fill in. So I made it part of the workshop that everyone in the workshop had to get an ORCID because <laughs> it's important that we have that sort of students understand the, the value of an ORCID. And so we made it as well, like, okay, I'm gonna give you five minutes. This is where you have to go get an ORCID and put it in your DMP already. And this was actually very well received by the library because they were like, I don't, how do we encourage them to get more ORCID and to make sure that they have a profile and they use it and this. So this was sort of like one way to help in that regard. And then we did sort of a online practice. So we did breakout rooms 
and I put five people in each room and we broke it into different small sessions of writing, sort of discussing what you need to do for what data, what data are you collecting and these things, um, and then discuss with your sort of five people that you're working with. And I did it in sort of, as I said, in different um, sections. So here, for example, in the general and admin, I said, okay, five minutes, because this is something you probably just copy paste from your research proposal, or you already fill it in like your name and institution and these things. Most of the PhD students, of course, they also don't have any funding. So all of the questions of funding and number ID stuff is uh, not filled in. Then we did uh, preparation and legal agreements. Um, and I tried to do like examples. So this, this, this we have already examples in the template. So I did a little bit of an intro. What are we going to ask you? What are the most important questions of this section? And how do you how can you answer this? And then they go into the room and like talk together. So this is example of um, the um, legal agreements that we ask uh, or everyone to fill in. And in the legal agreements, we also started adding. So for us to track which tools researchers are using and what version of the tool they're using, we ask them to put the, the legal agreement that will be like the terms and conditions of the tool at that date and which version was it. So we put it there. Um, and then like sort of in this next section of uh, collecting and analyzing, we also have sort of a, an example and a list of things that you could add. And then after research is broken into reuse and then archiving. So we have sort of like two sections. Um, and here we talk a little bit about metadata and how do we, uh, document your data. And this is sort of a list of um, examples that could go into the archival package. So the archival package would be more like you don't uh, share this archival package, but it's more um, mostly for integrity purposes later on. And so that was sort of the first in February, what we did, and some of them already feeling stuff, and some of them were like, I'm very lost because I don't even know what my project will be. And I was like, okay, that's fine, just for you to know what the questions are. Um, but when, so we reached, uh, let's say mid August, and I still haven't received any DMP that I had to approve, and the deadline was 1st of September. <laughs> so then I started receiving emails like, oh, I'm lost and I don't know what to do again. And what was it? And what platform was it? And I'm very sort of thing. So I created a very sort of quick, um, it's called quick guide, where also is very short videos of creating your account, um, starting your plan, which uh, template to choose and these things. And, uh, and then I went to revising all the plans. And this is actually just, um, you can see the, the peak of more data management plans in, so this is February, which was probably when the course was, and then again in um, August, September, when they have to submit. So, and then you will see, so the Rotterdam School of Management and the Erasmus School of Economics are the biggest schools of EUR. So it's not super represent because this will be everyone using the EMP online, which is most of the faculties, not all the faculties. I, I will go into that later on. But so this will be a not fully representation that is only ERIM faculties, let's say, uh, my faculties, but but it's a big, good chunk of them. <laughs> um, and so what actually what we learned from this exercise of actually doing the course and revising is that we ended up changing a lot. So we have, this was the, the first, the EUR data management plan template was the first version or the first uh, template that we started working with. So when we started, there was already something was done by the library. Um, but while working on it, we realized there's a few things that are not very clear. Or we can make these questions a little bit better. We can shorten some stuff. So we made the second version, which is the data management plan version 4.3. And then again, while working with it after the worksheet, the <laughs> workshops, when you get the same question on and on and on, then we okay, we we said okay, these things need to be changed and stuff. And then so now we have the latest version, which is the 4.4. And here you can see actually when <laughs> did we, we we switch. So in March 2021, we we switched the new version and people started adopting it. And then now only um, was end of September when we. Or even yeah, October when we released the newest 
version that we have right now. So people are already uh, adopting it, which is uh, good. And I think it's a lot clearer, at least for us, for when we're revising it, maybe for researchers still unclear sometimes. But for us, it's a little bit easier to check um, things. And so this is how we've been working with DMB online. However, there's a few um, caveats. <coughs> Excuse me. So the, as I mentioned, we sort of we were giving the job, let's say, that the library was doing before, which was the data management and taking over the MP online. But before we were, um, the library also had a Word document. And actually, even before the MP, the library had the MP online, there was a Word document. And so this is still offered. So this is the, the page, let's say, the web page of data management for the university. And you have the MP online, but you can also download a Word document. Uh, so this is the template, this is the Word document, and the guidelines is also a Word document. And so, so far, we still have some doc some faculties that do not use DMP online. They they actually don't want to use DMP online because they're used to the Word document. This, I guess, fear of change, I don't know. Um, and um, what means is that every update that we do, we have to update not only the DMP online template, but we have to update the Word document so that they will reflect the same thing. So we now have done the same update twice um, for these things. And of course, tracking changes and comments in the Word document is a lot more difficult than DMP online. So that is not great. And that also, of course, when you have a DMP that was sent to you in a Word document and you send back, most of this is in emails. And so there's not really a database for DMP. So, I mean, I don't have to convince you that DMP online is good for that, of course not. But that's sort of the thing that we have to be working with on top of um, having like quite a few faculties still working with the Word document. Um, so we still have to work a lot. That was, uh, yeah, we have um, a lot of uh, uh, behavioral change that we have to do, I guess. Um, so yeah, the moral of the story was that we have done a lot, but we still have a lot to do. I feel like we are in the top of the iceberg, but uh, <laughs> we are have a lot of things yet to do. And so we, when sort of discussing this, what do we, we like to see, let's say, or what will help us for DMP, um, DMP like to, to maybe easy, get it easier for us to, to work with. Um, the only one thing, well, the, these are the three things that we decided to sort of uh, mention, um, and I do know some of them are already uh, being worked on, but I don't know the latest. Um, so the format of the document when downloaded is still, uh, oh, sorry, still not very nice looking visually, let's say. Content wise is the same, so it's fine, but uh, I was thinking if, and I don't know if this actually mostly depends on the template, like I was thinking maybe we could just change the template to have like, for example, if you had a table template that you have to answer, then the, the output will be a little bit nicer, I would say. Um, the track record of the comments, I have asked for this and uh, it was um, like, if it was possible to export the DMP with comments, that would be useful. But also how we were saying would be great to have sort of a, like a database of comments because we do have to, even with revising the template several times, a lot of the times we do have to copy paste the same comment that we use for the last DMP because we still, people have the same question. And even that we wrote the guidelines to reflect what we know they're going to ask, people still, sometimes they don't read the guidelines or they're still confused. And so um, one of the other things Stuart said, it would be great that we can just sort of have a database and then click on the comments to say, okay, this is the same comment that I need to copy paste here. And the other one will be the API for for like a specific responses. So it would be great if we could have sort of um, that we yeah go through all the data management plans and say which one of them said yes to personal data or which one of them said yes to sensitive data, um, sort of like for more reporting sort of side. Um, and I do know there's some work on the API side, but I don't know the final. And with that, I'll finish. And I don't know if there's questions. I'll stop sharing. Yeah. 
Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Liz. Uh, thank you for your presentation and explaining uh, how you go um, about practices in your organization. I'll open the questions um, from the attendees. Is there anyone who would like to unmute and ask? I saw someone was also typing a question in the document, but first, if someone was having a question, feel free to unmute and ask Liz. Yeah, Mary. Hi, um, I was just wondering, so you run your um, training quite a bit in advance of when the students need to prepare their DMPs and submit them. I was wondering if you've maybe considered shortening that time so that you don't have that period where they forget about it and then have to come back to you for more input. If it would, if you, if by shifting your training, you might actually reduce the amount of time you have to spend on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what I propose now, well, so the thing is, it's, um, you know, when the scientific and integrity course, it, you, I can't move that thing, right? So that that's not even on, for me to be able to move it. So what I proposed was that in the same course, I would have more of an introduction to the, the management plans. And I proposed to have around May a hands-on workshop. So really filling in right there when you already kind of know already what are you doing. And they, they, they said that was fine. The only thing is that this workshop of filling it in would be more of, um, um, how do you say it? It's not mandatory. So they don't, they wouldn't get any credits for it. And it would be more of like, it will help you to fill it in. But so it's, it's a little bit of a compromise, but I do think it's important because I fully agree, like, to me, it felt way too separated. And I kind of had to answer most of the same questions for all the PhD. So I had seven, 18 PhD students, and there were at least, honestly, like, I don't know, 14 that I had to go through exactly the same thing. So I was like, this would have been way better one day in one meeting, everyone sitting down, and we got through these questions together. But yeah, so we're gonna, pro I mean, I proposed that and they said, okay, maybe we can, we can have a, but it's more of a non voluntary basis that will help you kind of thing. Yeah, ideally, I think it would be good to embed it as a course, I think, but uh, so far it's not, yeah, it's not possible. Thanks. There is another question um, that was posted in the document. Do you know whether changes happened for the user when switching from an older to a newer version of the uh, data management plan template? Did the users have to copy and paste their answers into the new version or did that happen automatically? Oh, that's a very good question. I think they have to copy paste them. So it's not automatic because that will have right. to be done by an API, right? I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I yeah, so not... like some API that does this for you. <laughs> that would be great. Exactly. Yeah. So they were done manually. Okay. I was, uh, uh, I, I pasted that question. I was wondering, um, because it, it looked like you had, the versions had different, uh, or were actual templates, different templates. So I was wondering whether you had tested if you had done those changes within the old template, just like a kind of a, a, an ongoing updating would that have changed things for the for the users oh that's a good point i yeah possibly the thing is in some cases we really had to remove the question and then or completely okay. change the way like sometimes for example in the data collection we just had a open box question and then we said this is doesn't make any sense because people not don't write everything so we made it a table that you have to really mm. write data formats and size and so these will you cannot really sort of from from one i wouldn't think it's possible just from one text box the information will be copied into the table you know what i mean that, yeah. that would have yeah. to be done manually i think mm. but uh but it's a good yeah maybe we can try it next time because we still want to make it a little bit we want to play with the format in a way. I've seen a lot of data management plans that it look, um, I'd say, visually easier to read because it's more of a table and you have questions and you have the answers. And so it's a little bit uh, cleaner to the eye, you know, in my view. Um, but then that would mean kind of reinventing the template a little bit. Mm. So maybe mm. once we have a more sort of these, then adding stuff will be easier if in the same version of the template kind of thing. 
maybe Magdalena knows whether if you if you do smaller changes, minor changes, whether that actually has an effect on on a user's uh, plan. I would need to run through uh, the use case scenario to see how it would reflect. But I think if you start working with the older template, um, that's what you continue working with. So once the new template is built up, um, I expect that you would need to restart. It would not update the template if somebody's already working with it, if it answers the question. Mm -hmm. And if, how if, let's say somebody's, you have, an, you have a template and you just change, I don't know, a word in the question. That's and a new that, version. That's that would a new be version. a new version, yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. if, the, if the researcher started uh, with the old template, they would continue uh, with the old one. And if you wanted, even if it's a little worse, they would need to start with a new one. Thanks. No My birds just started to chat a lot. So if it's too loud, Diana, please let me know. And I'll just move to a different room. Um, I'm staying in the kitchen. It's just because it's the warmest room in my house at the moment. I don't know whether we have any more questions for Liz. I have a question. Um, um, the question is, you say that there are departments and faculties that still don't use DMP online and it's giving you extra work. Um, I, I'm just wondering, is there anything we can do to, uh, you know, encourage people to use the tool rather than uh, the, the word template? Yeah. Yeah. So is there any additional motivation that could, could encourage them to actually use the tool? Yeah, I mean, I, so, for example, the way the way I tackled it was because so if you think about it, the, the information is now in the in the central, um, let's say, university website, but then every faculty has their own website. And in my faculty, there was another template, even without using outside DMP online, there was a completely different template when I started. And the way, I mean, but maybe it was too harsh, the way I did the switch was to completely remove that and then say, this is how you have to do it, you have to use DMP online. And there was only a few people that told me, oh, I, I had already this template that I used before. And I said, no worries, I can very happily revise that for the next one, just please use the MB online. But I do know that at other faculties, this, this is not, I mean, this was proposed and it was not taken very nicely. So they said, no, we want to use the old version. Um, so I think maybe, but that, I don't know if it's more on to us to, keep pushing a little bit and also to say that most of the other faculties at least in the Netherlands and many other places outside the Netherlands are using DMP online. So I think it's good to sort of keep promoting to say, hey, did you see this? Everyone is using DMP online or hey, um, the other faculties, your collaborators also might be using DMP online. So it's easier for you to collaborate in, a, in this tool together, for example. I mean, also board makes it very difficult to collaborate with many other people at the same time, right? So I I think maybe it's like for researchers that are on their own or something is easier in a way. Um, yeah, I don't know if maybe there, I do know there's other data stewards here from you are. So maybe if you guys want to say something uh, from your faculties, from your experience, <laughs> Nils or Anna, maybe, um, I think it would be, if you think, yeah, the, the DCC could help us somehow, then, uh, yeah. Well, for me, uh, the word template, um, a lot of times it's easier to, to um, add information there for researchers rather than having to, you know, create an account at a separate uh, or log in at a separate portal and look at a different interface so for them as, um, as far as it goes for just filling something out for the first time, they find it easier. Um, and also the concern that Liz, um, I know has, um, <laughs> I don't necessarily share that it's harder to give feedback on because I think the commenting function of Word, um, yeah, works, works pretty well. So I guess for the first timers of people who have to do a DMP for the first time there, um, uh, it can be useful. And for maybe more re senior researchers who have trouble finding into um, a new user interface, 
Um, but yeah, I think usually it's worth it explaining DMP online and then uh, working in there. So you think it's mostly an internal job? You guys have to do campaign internally rather than us helping you in any way? Well, if I may, I think uh, Liz had a, a slide where she said, like, the, the, it was, there was a little bit, like, she touched on what we would like to see with DMP online in terms of improvement. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, it's not only us campaigning for it, but it also, like, moving in both directions. So you coming closer to us and we campaigning for it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, the usage of API uh would be definitely a huge improvement because that would allow us to collect data like at the moment for me personally i don't see huge difference between a um a dmp made in dmp online and a dmp written in microsoft word because in both cases i basically have to open each of them individually and i cannot really aggregate the data and uh, like and even in Word, it sometimes seems that it is easier to track my own comments. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, basically, adding this kind of functionality for data stewards would be really helpful in motivating data stewards to promote DMP online. OK. So I think we need to add more API functionality um, and better facilities for, um, you know, processing data. Uh, and that will be, make it easier for data students to sell it, to, um, pro sorry, promote it, <laughs> you know, sales people to promote it to your own users. Okay. Thank you. We just got like a few comments then uh, in the chat from Jenny, uh, who was saying she is going to be accepting reviews only through DMP online from the new year. Uh, so she'll be writing people to the tool. I don't know whether you want to comment more on this, Jenny. Hi, so yeah, we um, are only kind of at the very beginning of our subscription to DMP online. So, um, one way that we are going to be we're, and we're in a much straight more straightforward position i'm based in the library and all of the support is coming through the library um so what we're going to do is um kind of force people to use it and say i will only accept i won't be accepting word documents anymore you have to go and use the tool and just use the the existing functionality and kind of encourage them um use a bit of a stick to say you have to use the tool um, we're, we will also hopefully be increasing our staffing numbers from one to one and a half. Um, so it means that we will also be able to kind of manage that as well, where we will potentially have, sorry, the dogs, um, we'll have uh, more than one person reviewing as well. Uh, my doorbell has also just gone, which is why the dogs are barking. Very, so I'm, very I'm really sorry, I'm going to have to run for a second. It's been very good Um um, I'm just thinking we okay so we had another comment just not to miss from uh, Zine and she was saying data stewardship is there any library representative in the group so I think there was a question for you Liz yeah yeah which is great because we do have an example here Paul is here <laughs> and Paul is from the library so we do have uh, so we have a weekly meetings with the data stewards and in these meetings there's always someone representative from the library in the meetings as well and these meetings go about everything and uh, like completely other things as well, but also the MP online sometimes. And so every time, because technically we took it over from them, but they still they are still the owners of the MP online. Um, and so we we every time we do an update, then we pass it through them as well. And then um, I think I mean the, the the relationship is very great. I think, but at some point we had to take it over ourselves to also say okay. How do we make it? How do we improve it? Because we are now the ones revising it rather than them that they were the one they were revising it before. So I guess we had different um, ways of working as well. So we said, okay, for us, this will be clearer if we change these questions and this will be clearer if we put it in a table format and like this. So we now sort of, yeah, changed a few things. But I guess 
my impression was that they were happy with the changes. Uh, Paul can say the opposite if he doesn't agree, I guess. But I think, uh, yeah, so we do have people from the library still and every week and yeah, getting, um, it's mostly they are, they were sort of training us at the beginning, to be honest, uh, passing information. Yeah. And just a follow up, uh, Liz from Zin Ash, she's asking, what is the library role in the process besides being owners of the NPs? Um, so, like the process goes very much like the researcher. So, for example, yeah, so you get you get asked at several points to submit a DMP, so either by the funding agency or by the ethical approval or as a PhD student. Um, the information of where to find a data management plan and how to make it that will come either from the library page, which is the central page or faculty wise. So we have sort of a, um, different ways to catch the information, let's say, so researchers could find this information. So then they will write and then when, when they go and request the feedback, it goes into a central email of the data stewards and then we ourselves forward it to whoever is the data steward for that faculty. And then we send the comments back. Um, this only started happening um, a few months ago, like June, I think, June, July. Uh, before that, it was the library that would forward the request directly to us because that the, the request feedback was actually going through the library and then the library would forward to us. So now we set it up this uh, sort of joint account and then so now we get it ourselves. So I guess right now is more on um, um, advice level, I would say. We do some things and then we get a check by the library and we said, okay, how could we improve this and how to make it a little bit more um and then maybe i guess also um so we had to we update all the versions in the library website as well as our websites right so then the information gets updated on both sides um i will imagine there's still people like maybe sometime contacting the library asking for stuff and then the library has to forward them to us or something um yeah but uh yeah, I guess if you were very, uh, like the role that they play in the process will be mostly the ownership and then advice and sort of, uh, yeah, we do consultations with them still every week or so. I mean, the weekly meetings, but then on DMP online specific, it will be, yeah, not, not very often, but sometimes, yeah. Thank you, Liz. Um, are there any more questions? If if not, I'll I'll just say big thank you to Liz, and I'll just uh, continue with a few updates from us uh, before we wrap up. But many thanks, Liz, for your presentation and uh, to everyone uh, for your comments, your questions. And uh, I hope you found this very valuable and, and insightful today. So a few things I just wanted to update you from the DMP online team is that uh, for those who missed our October session, uh, we have live recording. And if I can ask Diana, she'll share the link with you in the chat so you can catch up uh, with the recording from last month. Um, and we were also running a user group on the 2nd of November. Um, I'm providing a link from a short summary in a blog post. Um, we started the day with welcoming new organizations that joined us over the past year because we realized that in our, not normally in drop-ins, but in user groups and trainings, uh, we tend to give more space to people to introduce themselves and chat a bit more. Um, and since we took these virtually uh, because of the pandemic, there wasn't that much space um, for the intros. So uh, we just listed uh, the organizations here and uh, we were inviting for everyone who wanted to say hi and keywords and just to introduce um, themselves. So if you have an access to the link, which I think all of you do, because uh, that's how you needed to access uh, the link for today, you can see who joined us over the past year and you can always get in touch with us if you wish to connect with any of the other organizations, we'll try to put you in touch. Um, and then we continue today with giving you an update on versioning. Our latest group uh, just browsed 
summer or it was a summer group really uh, we allowed you to vote on the feature you would like us to develop and um, the feature that got most of the votes was really to start working on the versioning so I went through the mockups and explained what we had done over the summer. We have been putting together the specification documents and we really presented you of um, the final thoughts of how we envision and we hope we envision well based on your previous feedbacks, where this will be, how it will function, who will have access uh, to this and we're just collecting further feedback uh, from you. Um, and then my colleague Patricia was just showing you in the other half um, of the user group potential extensions for DMP online uh, from our colleagues uh, in DMP tool. Um, as you know, we are running the open source code with DMP tool. These are our colleagues in uh, California. And as we do sometimes have separate functionalities uh, that can be switched on and off just for DMP online, they have their own uh, features and functionalities that can be switched on and on in DMP tool. And uh, Patricia was presenting you with a research output, um, which is a functionality of adding uh, data sets or other research outputs into the DMPs. And these were welcomed uh, very well by the administrators. Um, however, um, Minting DOI uh, was raising further questions, so I think this is something we'll need to carry forward and uh, maybe discuss more in the upcoming user groups. Um, but if you're interested uh, in the future user groups and you definitely don't want to miss those, I hope you're already on our mailing list, but feel free to email us at dmponline at dcc.ac.uk and uh, I'll ensure that you are added to our list and uh, you can uh, raise your thoughts for the next user group and we can ensure that your voice is heard. And also for those who don't know, uh, we'll be doing a training for admin features in February, 2022. Our registration page is now open and we'll be starting day half past nine in the morning and will really run uh, through uh, the admin uh, functionalities of the MP online. We are asking you this time around as well to raise any issues or concerns with us prior to session. So if there are some specific areas you are not entirely sure about uh, how certain features function, uh, we have a document where we want to collect your questions. And in the second part of the training, we hope to spend more time going through these. And um, as a new thing, since this will be taking place online, uh, we will be doing follow-ups with you three or four weeks afterwards if, as well, if that's something that will be desirable, because as it happens very often, you attend the training, you think everything is clear, but once you take all of your knowledge back uh, to your desk and start working through the items, you might forget. So we'll be offering 30 minute time slots for everyone who will be attending the training and give you basically an opportunity to go through some things that might have not worked for you uh, once you took all of your knowledge back. Um, we were also uh, doing RDA uh, DMP online poster session around community building and as soon as we have the links uh, publicly available we'll be sharing these with you as well. And last but not least we are having quite a lot of upcoming events uh, and the next one um, is on the 7th of December, half past 10, which will be our next drop-in session. We don't have a guest speaker, but we are going to make this more uh, around community building and networking. And uh, we are putting together some nice activities. So um, if you are in the festive mood, feel free to join us. And even if not, maybe um, this will inspire you to get into festive mood. But, uh, it, it would be lovely to have you there and um, on the 7th of December. Diana? Sorry, um, I've just posted the various links for uh, various links for forthcoming meetings. And um, do you have any questions for the DMP online team in particular? Is anything unclear? 
I, I just, um, I rose my hand because I thought of, uh, I mean, this is exactly the example that Magdalena just said that you learn something and then you think about it later. And now I thought about it, about <laughs> support from you guys to make DMP online a little bit more visual, like maybe, or um, do you, um, so we have been starting to do more like awareness campaigns and in mm -hmm. general on research data management, but also sort of a specific topic. So I was thinking, do you, is this common that we could maybe ask you to do a intro and uh, not intro, but maybe like more what DMP online is and where did it come from and where is it going now or what is it for like the university so that we could have a session on DMP online what is it and then a more sort of um in in workshop or whatever that we can do ourselves but i think maybe it will help to see the perspective from you guys instead of just all saying oh it's great you should use it you know what i mean so i was wondering if this is something that you usually do or is it uh... we don't normally do but um i mean so you're talking about us doing um a, a kind of introductory giving a background information during one of your training sessions yeah exactly um you don't normally do roughly because there are i guess we have too many customers i guess provide perhaps um providing you with an introductory video that explains would that work or would you still oh, nice. yeah. so if we give an introductory video that explains how the tool started what's the purpose of it what are the benefits of using it would that work? I think that would really help. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about it because we're planning already sort of campaigns and stuff. And I thought maybe it would be nice. It's always nice to have external people enforcing or reinforcing the message. You know what I mean? So I think that would be useful. Yeah, if you have something or. Um, That's right. Putting in there some key messages as to why and where the tool yeah. is would also help. Why? What are the advantages of you know, building this database of data management plans, which... Yeah, exactly. Is, like how many other universities are using it and how this is improving or something. Yeah, I think that would be useful for sure. Maybe so. mentioning that in the long run, we're also looking into machine actionable DMPs, things that will be automatic yeah, that would be great. and processed by, by the tool and by other tools. Okay. Yeah. Magdalena, how do you feel? I'm sure we can... No, it's fine. I, definitely. Yeah, I'm just adding it into our notes and this is yeah. something we'll take on board and maybe even if we did it annually just once a year like intro video with some updates of mm -hmm. where we are heading and what we have picked up um that that's a good idea listen um i'll, I'll be taking them board okay are there any more questions no problem Liz. okay i think i'll be wrapping up slowly so last but not least uh do not forget us uh, do not forget to follow us on the social media and subscribe to our monthly newsletter if I could ask Sienna maybe to share the links with you one more time and like I mentioned if you can join us in the next drop-in meeting on the 7th of December at half past 10 it'll be lovely to see you and one big thank you again to Liz for your presentation and for answering all the questions uh, to all of you attendees for uh, participating and uh, driving the discussion and to Diana for uh, running the session with me today. And I wish you a nice rest of the day.